Welcome to the Swiss Frag Reefer channel. Um, this channel is all about um, sharing experience I have with my reef tanks and with the corals and make you successful in the hobby as well to make sure that you can grow similar uh, corals the same way I do. And um, today I show you guys the easiest uh, beginner SPS coral in my opinion and um, what are the tips and tricks around that one. So let's get there. Okay, in today's video we have a look at what I believe is the best SPS coral to start off if you are a beginner. Um, when I started my big reef here, the 425XL, I in the beginning kind of set for myself a goal and that was that I want to have mostly Montipora corals inside the tank because it's just much easier if you start off and you kind of focus on a specific coral because then you can make sure the light, the flow and everything kind of um, is set up for success for the coral itself. And um, the, my big tip is actually to start off with the Montipora uh, coral, especially that Montipora capricornis you see here in, uh, in purple. It's a a very very fast grower um, so that purple one is um, one of my big ones then here uh, on the bottom there's another one that one is more kind of um, plating to the bottom so it kind of more or less grows just over the stone here um, but the other big one I have is that um, Montipora capricornis here on the side that green one. When you see that that tank is uh, probably um, almost a foot wide here and um, that's the growth of around one and a half years, maybe a, a year and like three months. And uh, I all started it off, I have here on my frag tank, I have actually um, similar frags of that one. So when you look here one of these frags here in the front, kind of that size, I started off um, a little bit over a year ago and that kind of grew in that big, big, large um, coral you see here on the side. Obviously you want, especially because they grow that fast and um, spread out that much, you want to place them in a, in a good place, like as you see here, that's maybe in the middle to the bottom. Uh, also that one here, the orange cherry tree one is on the bottom. Um, also on that purple one here, you see that goes more or less everywhere. So I definitely have to kind of um, cut that down a little bit uh, soon. Um, I wouldn't really place it again on the very top like I did here inside. So the, there you see um, there's actually a, a grafted Monty, a sunset Monty and that green X and ham here in the front, if you can see that. So what I try to do there is just kind of that they all these corals merge there a little bit together, but um, I would be again cautious to place them that much on the top because they will just literally grow um, very, very quickly and just start shading other corals you maybe want to have um, somewhere below. So that said, um, my recommendation would be in the middle or on the bottom to grow that coral. But that's a little bit also depending on the light you have. Um, when you see I have on that aquarium, there's two Red Sea 160S lights, which each of them have 160 watts of light. So I get around um, on the sand bed, I get probably around um, 150 par. And I probably would recommend for these um, Monty Cap uh, corals around 125 
uh, par minimum. Um, if you want to kind of figure out how much power your light has, I would just recommend you go to the manufacturer's website. Usually that's kind of written there uh, with a diagram that says, um, obviously you mount your light a certain distance above your tank and then it kind of tells you what's the, what's the power level, level on whatever depth in the tank. So with my tank here, with the 160S, I run them on 80% blue and 90% uh, white mix on the coral. And that's why I get then the 150 pars on the sand bed, which I have to say, even for some of these mushrooms here, is almost a little bit too, uh, too much. So you see, that's why they kind of try to escape there a little bit to the shade. Um, but again, like for me, it was never really the, um, the goal was never really to be able to grow a lot of uh, soft corals. The goal was more to grow these SPS or small polyp stony corals, um, which I mostly have in that tank. Then you also get them in different varieties. Uh, I kind of, again, going back to the green one here, I like them the best when they do that um, that plating out. So when you look, that almost looks like a, like a rose, I always say. Um, it kind of makes that uh, crazy pattern. And, um, but there's no guarantee that they grow like this. So for example, um, that one here I have on the bottom also plates out, but that more or less goes kind of um, to the side and a little bit uh, along with the rock. And then you obviously have the nozzle, the Montiporas that are completely encrusting, like that green there on the back. Or for example, uh, here on the back, I have a, another very good example of completely encrusting. It's that uh, sunset Montipora there, which is completely shaded. You probably almost don't see it, um, but that one doesn't really branch or plate at all. It just kind of grows over um, the rock. Then um, another type, which is maybe more uh, branching is that Montipora setosa, the red one there in the middle. Um, I very much like that coral and I always wanted to have it. So I also got that one from uh, Jason Fox, I believe. Check out Jason Fox corals. He has uh, some of the greatest looking corals um, and it's very easy to order from him. And I kind of just like that he is a more or less, I mean, obviously it's now a business, but he is, as far as I know, like a private person who also made his hobby, his passion um, his main income probably. And uh, I just kind of like to support um, people like this who follow their dream and just kind of, uh, kind of rather give them the money to him than to another uh, big coral store or something like that. But next to the Mantiposa, I have here that, uh, like that Digitada, like the branching here is even more uh, when you see that, I also have the red version out of that one, which is here a little bit shaded uh, underneath my Stylophora or also like a big chunk. And that one actually multiple times broke off, but I was kind of able to save it here uh, on top and just kind of make that cool looking uh, construct here, that, that red one. Um, it's very easy and fast growing. So that's why, again, when I decided to uh, get back into the hobby, I wanted to have a coral where I see a quick success or where I see success in a quick time. Let's say like this, I don't really want to wait like five years till I see uh, slowly, slowly my reef tank uh, growing out. Um, I have to say now, since everything grew that much, sometimes they almost grow a little bit too fast. But especially as a beginner, I feel like the most satisfying thing is always when you see some success and that uh, actually the coral is growing rather than just kind of sticking around with the tiny little frags 
uh, you bought most likely in the beginning. Um, another thing is maybe uh, looking at the flow. So obviously when you look at my aquarium, I have two big Reefway 45 in the back and then uh, two narrow three on the side. And co in combination with the return pump, uh, there's definitely a lot of flow going inside that tank. I feel like you see it also when I go here a little bit uh, from that angle. Definitely the surface area of the tank is, um, you see a lot of movement. Um, and that's exactly what these corals definitely need. But I wouldn't say it's uh, that needy that, uh, like for example, like Acro that it needs high, high flow. But definitely make sure you not only have the stock pump inside or something like this, definitely make sure you have a wave maker or something like this who uh, helps out with the flow. And obviously the flow the coral needs, because you see it even here uh, on that one, often there's some debris, like here in the form of uh, some of the sand, which are actually getting picked up by the tanks and then they kind of throw them over the the coral here. That's why you need some uh, good flow that the debris and everything gets actually then away from the coral flesh just to make sure it doesn't uh, like uh, uneaten food and stuff hangs out on the coral and starts then to to rot and damage the, the flesh of the coral itself. But again that's my big uh, recommendation for for a beginner is to start off with a Monty Cap, Montipora Capricornis, could be also another Montipora, but usually these Monty Caps, they just grow the fast and you see the, uh, the quickest uh, result. I would also make, maybe make sure when you start up the tank that you get a little frag maybe from a friend, maybe uh, go to a reefer club or something like this and then maybe see if you get from a friend like I have here um, like a tiny little uh, frag for a good cheap price then you can put it in your tank and then you usually see pretty quickly if you are successful can grow that out or not. Another thing especially I get that question quite often um, is if the which light is needed for these um, corals. It's obviously, I always say like, if you can grow the coralline algae, which you see on the back wall, which goes in my case all the way uh, down to the bottom, that means if you can grow a coralline algae on that kind of depth of the, level, uh, of the tank, then you can also grow most likely the Montipora um, over there. If you maybe have not the strongest light and you see coralline algae only on the very top of your tank, most, uh, most of the time obviously on the rock or on the, um, on the back wall, then I would just recommend to place that coral then also in that area because otherwise it just gets not uh, enough light. But if you have any question about light, the flow, uh, you're welcome to leave that in the comments and I see if I can uh, help you out with some answers. Otherwise, just go uh, to the manufacturer's website, check that out. It's usually always kind of written in there. But that's, in my opinion, uh, the best beginner SPS coral you can um, try out. And uh, they are also not very expensive, so usually you always get them for a good price in any kind of store or from other reefers uh, or online. And uh, definitely make sure you kind of try them out before you invest a lot of uh, money, for example, into like acros like this, because they are then definitely a little bit more uh, demanding and um, yeah. But I had that myself, uh, it's sometimes hard when you start out with the hobby. Uh, they always look so tempting, all these corals, so you want to sometimes maybe go quicker than you should. Um, but from the experience I have now, that's, that's exactly what I would do. I would take 
a little chunk of Montipoda Capricornis, put it in my tank. And if I can successfully grow that and increase the size and keep the coloration of it for a couple weeks, then most likely you're ready for other uh, SPS corals. Okay, I hope that ramps it up a little bit. Uh, again, an overview, especially about the Montiporas I have in my tank. Um, and it's, in my opinion, uh, one of the nicer corals you can have. Also, maybe again, quick back to the growth rate, because that's definitely also a question I always had in the beginning is what's the growth rate of a coral. Um, again, coming back to the big green here on the side, that's what you get after a year from a little chunk. And when you go to a real acro, like I have here on the tip of the rock, that's the same uh, time. That's also growth of a year. Um, but obviously the result is much, much smaller. Um, they are super nice, the acros, but um, if you want to fill out your tank, if you want to get rid of the look of only rock and fish in your tank, then definitely give the Montiporas a try. Next to the flow and the light in the tank, you obviously also want to make sure you have good water quality because that's always the foundation of uh, every kind of success uh, in the reef tank hobby with corals. Um, but other than that, um, again, that's my top recommendation for you. Buy a little piece of Montipora, put it in your tank, give it a couple weeks and then you see if you have success or not or if you have to change anything on your setup. Because otherwise you just buy a lot of frags, put it inside and they just go slowly, uh, all die then within that. But that's my um, absolute uh, beginner tip, Montipora Capricornis. Um, I hope you had the opportunity to learn something in that video. Definitely put any kind of comments down below uh, and ask the, all the questions you have and I'm happy to answer them. And we see us in the next video. Thank you.